let's welcome Patrick Brown to our community. Are we ready, guys? Okay, Patrick Brown, welcome to our community, Etobicoke. Uh, Patrick Brown, as you know, is running for conservative federal leader. He is right now the mayor of Brown Top. Patrick uh, Brown, welcome to our community, please, once again. Well, thank you, Abby, and thank you for coming today. I know it's a beautiful day outside, and you, you chose to be here with us, and I'm grateful for the generosity of your time. And this leadership is important right now for the country. This leadership in the Conservative Party will decide the direction of the conservatism in the country, but also, very likely, who will be the next government of Canada. In Canada, governments only last eight to ten years, and the next election's in three. The government's already been in power for seven which means this leadership could elect who governs Canada for the next 10 years. And I'm a very different type of conservative. I'm an inclusive conservative. I look at the current conservative party, and in many respects they are broken, and I want to fix it. I look at the current conservative party, and I see a party that's not championing the Canadian dream in the manner that I'd like to. For me, the Canadian dream is it doesn't matter where you're born, the color of your skin, what God you worship, everyone deserves equal opportunity in this country. And I see examples of barriers right now in our country. You look what's happening in Quebec. Right now in Quebec, there's a bill, Bill 21, that says if you wear a hijab or a turban or any article of faith, you can't be a government worker. And we have the Prime Minister and conservatives like Pierre Pauly have sitting on the sidelines saying they're okay with it. A Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian, and we shouldn't have second-class citizenship. What should, what should count is talent, determination, work ethic. That's what should count. And if we allow a bill in Quebec that infringes religious freedom, that says if you wear a turban or a hijab, you're a second-class citizen, that is a cancer in the country. If you allow discrimination to take hold in, in one province, it can spread. And good politicians stand against discrimination, stand against bigotry, they don't sit on the sidelines. You know, I look at other barriers to the Canadian dream right now. Right now, we have the longest backlog in Canadian history in immigration. The longest backlog, over two million people on the backlog. Part of the Canadian dream is that families can be together. You know, Canada is the story of immigration. And I hear some people on the extreme, and some of my political adversaries, on the extreme right wing who attack immigration. And I say, if you're not indigenous, everyone's story is one of immigration. If you're not indigenous, every story is one of immigration. And the, and the story of Canada is no matter where you come from, you can succeed in this country. So we need to get rid of that backlog. I want to see families reunited. I want to be able to deal with the skill shortage we have in Canada. We desperately need manpower. We need people to help build houses. And staff our businesses. We need immigration to unlock the economic potential of the country. Never has there been more acute labor shortages than right now. And immigration can change that. The other barrier I see to the Canadian dream right now is foreign credential recognition. Foreign credential recognition. Right now, there is so much bureaucracy and red tape that I hear stories across the country. I've been in all 10 provinces over the last month, and I hear stories of nurses who want to help in the hospital, but they can't because their degree is not recognized. I hear stories of doctors that want to care for patients during the pandemic, but they can't get their residency spot. There's that old saying, if you want to, if you want to find a good cardiologist, call a cab. That's not right. Let people use their God-given talent in Canada. If you got the talent, you should be able to use it. Enough of the red tape and the barriers. We need a prime minister who's going to take a chainsaw to the barriers that exist in foreign credential recognition. You know, I look at engineers who want to practice in our country that don't have the capacity to because of these barriers. And the list goes on and on. You know, my type of Canada is one that fights hate. My type of Canada is one where we see stigma, and barriers, we tear them down. 
And one area that I'm very different than the conservatives you might have heard of before is on the issue of Islamophobia. When a lot of people hear about the conservative party, you probably hear they're not a friend to the Muslim community. Is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah. yes. Well, I grew up and my best friends were of Muslim faith from Egypt. And when I saw examples of hate in this country, it made me angry because I thought of my friend. When I was leader of the Ontario Conservative Party, I became the only conservative leader in the country to support the motion condemning Islamophobia. And people ask me, you're going against the federal conservative party. And I required every conservative MPP in Ontario to join me in voting to condemn Islamophobia. And they said, why are you doing that? Why are you going against the federal conservative party? And I said, the federal conservative party is on the wrong side of history. Hate is hate is hate. And what I never want to see in this country is us try to replicate what we've seen in the US where we build political support on who we push down. That's not how we do things in Canada. My type of conservatism is where if one group of Canadians is attacked, we're all attacked. If one group of Canadians is attacked, we stick up for them. That's how you build a family that is united. And I look right now, some of the challenges we have in this country, Islamophobia is one of them. We've got some systemic discrimination. And you can't tell me there isn't. Look, just last week there was a Muslim charity that had to challenge the CRA because Muslim charities were being disproportionately audited. Look at, the, look at our immigration system. Why is it so much more difficult for a student coming to Canada from a Muslim country to get approval to learn in Canada than elsewhere? You know, let me share a stark contrast. It's the issue of Ukraine. I am happy, let me be very clear, I'm happy that Canada is helping, as we should. They set up an expedited refugee system within a week and a half a week and a half to help those fleeing violence and adversity. And I'm glad we are, be very clear, I'm glad we're helping in Ukraine, as we should. Canada should be there 100% with our ally Ukraine. But when you see what they're able to do in a week and a half, when there's a will, there's a way. A week and a half, you can set up a refugee system. How many people here have loved ones in Somalia who have been waiting to come to Canada? All of us. Okay. And what's the average wait time on family unification? Five years. Five years. Seven years. Ten years over nine years over there. That's unconscionable. I mean, you gotta call it out. It's unconscionable. You know, I'm lucky enough that my family all lives around the GTA, but I couldn't imagine being away from them. And what's made Canada great since day one is a country that is open, a country that welcomes those that want to succeed in our country from every corner of the globe. It's the beauty of Canada. So when I see an immigration system that is stalled, that picks favorites from where in the world we're going to accept those that want to succeed in Canada, I see an immigration system that's broken. You know, call a spade a spade. I've heard stories from high commissioners where they say they have literally storage rooms full of applications and no one paid, no one staffed to go through them. It's a lottery system almost on family unification. And it's such a, a loss for Canada. You know, I was driving through Eastern Ontario. I went to two coffee shops where there's a big sign, no one available to work closed. I talked to people in the housing industry to talk about a lack of affordable housing. We can't build houses because no one to, to build. IT companies where you can't get people in the IT sector to staff them. Trucking companies where you can't get people to, to work in the truck camps. We need immigration to unlock the success of our country, the prosperity of our country. So when I see the immigration system stalled and sputtering because of lack of resources, I think how sad that is for Canada. So I'm a different type of conservative. The guy I'm running against is not a progressive, inclusive conservative like me. And the reality is one of us is going to be Canada's next Prime Minister. The guy I'm running against got up in the House of Commons and voted against condemning Islamophobia. He said it was made up. He did a press conference trying to ban the niqab in the federal civil service. His campaign manager did a campaign announcement on the barbaric tip lines, trying to create a snitch line of Canadians against Canadians. 
These are two polar opposite visions. You got one guy who's trying to replicate the far right in the US, and you got one like me who's trying to bring a modern conservative party together by saying we're gonna build a party that is inclusive, that brings Canadians together from every walk of life. But here's the thing, the only way to change the Conservative Party to one that you know has your back is to vote. The same old, same old Conservative Party, I get why you're distrustful. The same old, same old Conservative Party is broken. This is the one opportunity we have to change it. Every 20 years there's a leadership where the Conservative Party is leading in the polls. The last time they had a leadership like this was 2004 and it led to Prime Minister Harper. This leadership is unique. We might not get an opportunity like this for a long time to redefine the right wing in our country. And you guys are going to be part of something historic. What Abdi is working on right here is for the first time, for the first time in Conservative Party history, the, the, the community of Somali Canadians is getting organized to vote in this leadership. This has never happened in the Conservative Party. And I have to say, when the community gets organized, it can make a huge impact. The vote is so powerful, the vote can change the direction of history. If you sit on the sidelines, that's when the status quo continues. But if you get involved, if you vote, you change Canadian history. And so my plea to you is, Participate. All you have to do is sign up to vote and a ballot be mailed to your house. And all you have to do is mail it back. And I, I'm going to go further than that. My Conservative Party isn't just one that fights for Canadians of all faiths. I look at your community and I say, when I look at our slate of candidates, when I look at the Senate, when I look at the government, I want to see your community in it. And frankly, I look at Ahmed Hussein different party, but he chose to get involved. And now he's an opportunity to serve in the federal cabinet. I hope there'll be a conservative version of his participation. I hope that I can find members of the community to say, I want to serve my country, I'm going to put my name on the ballot, I'm willing to offer my ideas, my work ethic to the Canadian people. Because Canadian democracy is accessible. There isn't barriers. If you want to run, you can run. If you have a leader who creates those opportunities, and my goal is to create a conservative party that reflects the beautiful mosaic of our country. So what, that's what this race is about, about changing modern conservatism, and I'm grateful that I have a friend like Abdi helping me on this journey. Because that's what this is, this is a journey in history to change conservatism in Canada, and I'm determined to make this community part of that story. And you know, as Mayor of Brampton, Etobicoke is not too far away. And we have a lot of similar challenges, a lot of similar opportunities. And I'll be here to support the community any way I can and grateful for your time on such a beautiful day. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Brown, I know you don't speak. Uh, you stay behind cameras. But this time, it's time to act and make a history and make a difference. I have been approached uh, from a conservative party and I have noticed that the movement was going to make a big difference this time around. Because I will never let, allow my sister's hijab to be removed without their permission. It, that should be their choice and step. I am also want to welcome to the microphone one of my friend, good friend, my big brother, who I follow his footsteps uh, today to say a few words since we have our man Patrick Brown in town. We got legends that are walking in, a former football player, uh, Ali Green. We thank you for this time. Uh, I normally translate a lot, so never mind if I pick up some Somali words <laughs> right away. Uh, please come over here and say some few words to the community. And once again, welcome to our community, Patrick Brown. Assalamu alaikum. 
Uh, it's very humbling in Valatakrim, uh, aka you know, uh, you know, uh, my big brother. So um, I'm deeply humble. <clears throat> um, I just got here and I really don't know much about it. And I've been away from Canada for five years. But uh, uh, what I have for me Brown, and the question that I have for me Brown is that while I was in Cameroon, I realized Canada uh, bringing a lot of Indians from India as an immigrants, almost a million, million Indians came to Canada. And uh, meanwhile, um, oh, okay, let me, let me paraphrase it. Um, also, uh, what's happening today in Ukraine, I think all of us humans move. That moves us as humans. But my question to Canada is that, is Canada going to um, continue to be a racist and bigoted country, bigoted nation, that really uh, do not really care about the Canadians who are here. I mean, what I want to give you, um, Mayor Brown, um, the day, um, if and when that you become, and I'm hoping that you will, uh, the next uh, Prime Minister of Canada. Um, Canada, um, that we know today, is very much different than the Canada that's out there. The Canada that I know personally is a racist towards my country and to my nation and the color of my skin, my religion and everything. And I'm saying this with respect, that one of the largest concentration refugee camp is uh, in Kenya, and that holds 400,000 Somalis. And we're still struggling to bring our people from, 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 to sponsor them. So, I mean, the policies that exist in Canada is the same policies that existed uh, 1800 or maybe early 1900. So I do know that Canada herself um, uh, has put some sort of, uh, you know, um, 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 policies um, that are crippling uh, Somalia today. So, as Somali Canadians, we're still struggling with that. We still have issues with immigration. We still have issues with policing. And our young people are still, you know, um, targeted. And uh, we also suffer from coming in and going out. Me coming back, I just came back from Cameroon. Five years I was in Cameroon. And I, I was coming back from Cameroon. And I was harassed, asked all kinds of nonsense questions when I came home. So I didn't feel Canadian. Canadian. So my question to you, Mayor Brown, if and when that you are uh, elected, what change are you going to bring to the people? And I, I do understand what you said. You said that we need to vote. Not only that we want to vote, we want to be part, we want to be sitting on the table. If we're not on the table, we're on the menu. So we don't want to be on the menu any longer. So I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. You know, when I say I'd like to see candidates run from the community, maybe there's an example of a candidate right there. I uh, love the, the passion and eloquence. Um, I agree, I think there's systemic discrimination in our, our, our immigration system. Call a spade a spade. There's, you can't explain the wait times. You can't explain um, the double standards. And so my goal would be to bring equity, to bring balance, to bring fairness. And frankly, we're gonna need to expand our immigration system. Part of the problem is not properly resourced. And I believe that the greatest strength, one of the greatest strengths in Canadian history has been immigration, and one of the greatest tools for our success in the years to come is gonna be immigration. You have to properly resource it. Um, and, and I think there is an incredibly, uh, there's an incredible untapped pool of talent in Africa that hasn't been tapped. And in Brampton, I actually set up an economic development desk focused specifically on Africa, first big city in Canada to do that. Uh, before, my goal was to actually go around Africa and look at where we can build bridges with the city of Brampton. I never thought I'd be in this position running for, for federal leadership, but in Brampton, you know, just right before COVID, I went and spoke in, in Nigeria, and I, could, I was blown away by the tech sector there. It's actually flourishing. And I believe there's, you know, from Somalia to Kenya to, to, to Nigeria, across Africa, I think there is a pool of talent that can help create prosperity in Canada um, that would be phenomenal for our future. Uh, but it needs a government of Canada to be on the ground in Africa, building bridges, having that welcome tent to, that welcome sign to Canada, not barriers. And so my commitment is, um, I'll end the double standards, and I'm going to create an immigration system that is inclusive, welcoming, and expanding.
Okay. Thank you, Abdi. Uh, yes, question right here. Uh, I don't like the politician, to be honest, in one thing. When they need us, they will come here and give us fake promise. When they became wherever, you don't see them. You don't see whatever they promised to do it. As a Somali youth, we have an issue. And this issue, I think the government themselves is involved. Our kids every day get killed for nothing. A young guy, 16 years old, boom, gone. Another 16 years old, gone. They will come here and say, oh, we'll do this, we'll do that. At the end of the day, nothing. For how long? From 2010 up to now, 2022, how many kids did we lost? A lot. Is there anything that has been fixed? No. So as you going for this big position, we don't need this stupid old guy they using a youth by getting money from government. I would like you to work with the youth themselves. Like me, like those one there, anyone who is old, they don't care about the youth. What they care is about them getting the money and put their pocket. As youth the But those one there, they don't care about you. If they care, we couldn't lose life. Every single day, we lose life. It doesn't matter more than my Dora, more than my son, more than someone else. We need system that this thing has to be stopped. How did 16 years old get the gun? Where this gun came from? It passed in the border. Who's sitting there on the border? Someone. So all those stuff need to stop it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, a few questions here and a few comments. And I'm going to note, Yeshua works in my office. Give us a wave, Yeshua. Yeshua, you've got some of my business cards? Yes, I going to hand up my business cards. It's got my direct cell phone number on it. So you can text me or call me. No one in between. You mentioned that a good public servant actually works with the community, um, not some old person who has it. I'll be hands on. You can text me. And the best example of my work ethic would be speak to anyone that you know that lives in Brampton and ask them if the mayor is hands on, if it works with the community. And I do in Brampton. My goal is now to expand that. I agree with you that the political system has been broken in many respects. And why this is, this is an opportunity to change it. I bet you haven't had a, someone aspiring to run for the conservative leadership ever in this hall before. And it's a sign that we're doing things differently. In terms of gun crimes, um, you're right, 90% of the, of the guns found in, in uh, crime in Peel Region and in the GTA over the last year have come from south of the border. And part of the problem is smuggling has become more sophisticated than ever before. And we need to make sure that we, we actually secure our borders because those weapons are being used to kill our young. And there is a giant hole in our border. So I'll give you an example. Just last week in Brockville, they found there was drones bringing guns over the border. Um, another case happened recently where someone went across the border for cross-border shopping and someone put a compartment of guns under the car with a GPS device. And they didn't even know they were smuggling guns. And so, organized crime has become more sophisticated and I think it's our responsibility to make sure the Canadian border is just as sophisticated because we do not want those weapons pouring in to our country. I think it's beautiful in Canada that you know we, we relatively are a much safer country than most, but that's not gonna be the case if we don't secure our border. And right now the Canadian border obviously has uh, loophole after loophole, otherwise you wouldn't be seeing 90% of the guns used in homicides here being smuggled weapons from the south of the border. Thank you. Thank you. Probably have time for one more question. I'm actually flying to Edmonton tonight, but I probably have time for one more question. Absolutely. Uh, we had people um, have done the, uh, what they were asked to do, parents. Go to school, get education, go to university, get a degree, finish your master's degree, get your PhDs, but still, so many discrimination they face. Um, by far, by numbers of young people are not getting the jobs, they're not good jobs that they need to get. And the candidate that uh, pretty much uh, uh, tells that uh, there's a lot of opportunity 
And in a dream, uh, matter of fact, our young people, and I say all, but some of our young people are struggling to the degree where they are having, you know, Canadian nightmare, right? They need a dream. So if and when you're elected, Mr. Mayor Brown, what are we what are you going to do? You're going to cry. So great question, why are young people from the community not getting those jobs? And I think it's government's job to make sure that there aren't barriers, that there isn't system systemic discrimination. And there is. And it's why I'm trying to be a force against policies that are racist and discriminatory. And examples I've given, you look in Quebec right now, that bill that says you can't be a firefighter, a police officer, a judge, a doctor, a nurse, if you wear an article of faith, that's racist and discriminatory. And unfortunately, we're seeing that cancel culture that is growing in our country. And we need politicians who won't sit on the sidelines and fight against it. Frankly, when I look at corporate boards in Canada, I want them to look like Canada. When I look at the House of Commons, I want it to look like Canada. When I, when I look at the institutions of, of corporate Canada, I want to see them look like Canada. And so I will be pushing and challenging corporate Canada and government to do a better job at making sure this is a country of equal opportunity. The premise of our country's greatness is equal opportunity. It doesn't matter who you love, where you're born, the color of your skin, what God you worship, everyone deserves equal opportunity in this country. And so I will, whenever I see those barriers, whenever I see those systemic discrimination, I'll do whatever I can to be a force against that. Um, and sadly, we're seeing those encroachments happen in our country, and there's too much silence in the face of that discrimination. So Apti is going to be playing a leadership role on our national campaign. So if you're interested in getting involved, let Apti know. Help us change the face um, of Canadian politics. Help us change the direction of, of conservative politics in this country. It will be better for conservatism, but better for Canada. I want your community to have a real voice within, within, this, within this political institution. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming, Professor Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear one more time for Professor Brown. The reality is, if we don't vote, if we don't change, nothing will ever be changed. We can sit down and look at it every day and say they're racist, we're not going to get involved, or we can make that change. We are required, we ask you guys to ask all your family members to register and make that history and let's make that change, please. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys for coming and giving us your time. I really want all of you guys to come and have a really large group for us so that we show the world that we can make that change. We're asking the girls to stand up behind us, we'll stand in front of you guys, and let's do all of that, please. Thank you so much for coming in for all of you guys. We have food here, and we have Birimo that's gonna perform for us before the mayor leaves at the door. So thank you so much, Birimo, for coming as well.